about a week before Easter in April of 1961, uh, my mother-in-law got a hold of my daughter, to tell her, got a hold of her daughter, my wife, tell, to tell her that there was an opening at Reynolds High School in Greenville, Pennsylvania, a new school opening. And uh, uh, they were interested in, uh, it was 60-60 when the school was opening, but they were interested in uh, uh, teachers and coaches and so on. And one of the job openings was in, of course, wrestling. And uh, I came in the second year, that was 1961-62. But at Easter time of the year prior to that is when they were interviewing for the next year. Okay. And uh, they, uh, they, my mother-in-law gave Ray Bost this information, who was a principal here at that time. And Ray gave me a call. I wanted to know if I was coming home at Easter time, would I come in for an interview? And uh, we'd go from there. And I agreed to it. But I told him that we had to leave on Easter before noon to head back to school at Purdue University. That's an eight-hour drive. You had to be back out there for school on Monday. And they agreed that I would uh, go over to uh, the Fredonia School to be inter uh, interviewed by Carl Welsh, who was a supervising principal at the time. And so I went over and he was there. We interviewed at like 10.30 in the morning for about an hour. Then he asked me if I would go to Jamestown to interview with the principal to tell me what teaching assignments were available, which I did. I went up there in Jamestown. And then I come back home, we left and went back out to Lafayette, Indiana. Within three weeks, I got a letter from the Reynolds School District indicating that I had been hired for the uh, head wrestling coaching position and uh, a job in uh, science and math, which at that time I was, I was certified in science but not math. So we come back home then in uh, June after I graduated at Purdue and signed their contracts and everything at that point in time. And uh, th that's basically how I get back here to uh, Greenville and uh, come to Reynolds High School. In 1975, they decided, the PIAA decided being that we broke into classifications, used to be just one class in wrestling years ago, and they broke up into class A and class B. And uh, that year they gave, they didn't give an award for it, they just announced the highest team points of all the schools down there would be declared the unofficial PIA state wrestling uh, champions. And that was the very first year that they did that. And fortunately, we did win it in uh, the Class uh, B in 1975. I don't recall who won the Class A. Then, in 1976, we won it outright when they did officially recognize it on the state level along with all the other sports, football, basketball, I don't know about football at that time, but basketball and track and all the other sports. It was recognized as a major sport in the state of Pennsylvania and they gave the awards at that time. Well, we're fortunate over that period of 16 years we had nine undefeated seasons and then back in those days you were only allowed to wrestle not more than 14 matches a season and one holiday tournament was all you were allowed. And so the best you, the record you could have uh, on dual meets would be a 14-0 and 0 if you won undefeated, of course, and then if you won the, your holiday tournament would be another two matches. So that would be your best record, 16-0. and 0. And then that for dual meets. Then they had uh, the, the sections, districts, regions, and state. Back there, once you lost in the sectional tournament, which was the first one in February, you were eliminated. You could not advance to any other tournament. Whereas they've moved that up today, you kept going, they'll take second and third place guys. We left a lot of good wrestlers at home. But uh, they changed that in 1974. It was changed in 74 that they took the second place guy on to uh, the next tournament on. Uh -huh. I had five state champions, five state runner-ups, and three third places. It was 1966, Bruce Unax was the first one even from our high school to gain an appointment to uh, a uh, military academy, uh, Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. We were very fortunate. We had a lot of really dedicated athletes, and uh, uh, if the kids stayed in the program from the freshman year through his senior year, whether he wrestled a match or not, we'd give him a letter at the, at the end of his senior year, uh, and uh, most of them stayed. We had 
a number in our program. The highest numbers in the 70s, we had over 100 kids five straight years in the program, 9 through 12, 100 in the program. The eliminations took forever. During the eliminations, the guys that worked down at the tubes in the Westinghouse down here in the Reynolds area would come up in at 3.30 to come in and to watch the uh, eliminations because a lot of eliminations were better than the regular matches, really. Yeah. Uh, we'd get them packed in a small gym. They'd stand out in the hallway looking in because there was no room in there for them to come in. We ran the whole, both floors. That, that small gym opened in 1967 is when it opened up. Hmm. And that's, we used to work out in the cafeteria and move tables and chairs till 67 and then that gym opened up for us for practice. I still invite in, every five years I have a group in from the 60s, uh, early 60s, middle 60s, late 60s, early 70s, middle 70s, late 70s. I have men to my home and we have a, a big get together. My wife provides all of them food, drink, the whole deal, and we just have a big BS session to see what they're doing with their lives, inviting the assistant coaches that work with me during, in the program, and we've had a real good response. We've had them come from all over the U.S. As a matter of fact, the last one I had was a year ago, a year ago, next month, I had in 17 guys out of the 61, 62 team that were able to make it. The one that come the further, furthest was from North Carolina. Uh, Dave Mischek, a teacher down in North Carolina. No, well, other than the fact that I'm really, really pleased that Brian Hills was, was hired in 1988. Uh, after I resigned, Mark Riker took it for three years, and then he got out of it. And then after Mark Riker, Doug Rover took it for one year, and he moved on to Oil City to coach. And uh, then Ron Taylor from Greenville took it one year. And then uh, after Taylor, Ed McClamans took it four years, and after Ed, Brian came in in 88, and he's been here 22 years, I think. And he's been very successful. Took it to a much higher level.